السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Welcome again everybody in the last live session in Ramadan Today is going to be the final live session we do We only have a week left in Ramadan so we will stop Inshallah we will resume classes whether live or recorded uh, after Ramadan, inshallah, or after Eid, rather. And uh, since I mentioned Eid, today's session is going to be pertaining to uh, Eid. We'll start off with uh, the ruling of fasting the day of Eid. The day of Eid is prohibited. We cannot fast it. There is no difference of opinion amongst the scholars about this. It is haram according to the consensus of the Muslim scholars because there is a clear text indicating that it is forbidden. Uh, what's the wisdom of legislating Eid? Allah Azza wa legislated this, this day in Ramadan, after Ramadan and Eid al-Adha. Uh, Allah legislated them to make them days of joy and happiness and uh, people uh, entertain themselves, express gratitude. Their joy is actually reflected from the fact that they have been enabled by Allah. They were prolonged to live through that season, that blessed season. And they were enabled to worship Allah Azza wa Jal. So their joy is to thank Allah Azza wa Jal for that and because their hope in Allah Azza wa is great that He has accepted, forgiven, pardoned, expiated, and freed from the fire of hell, and raised their ranks in Jannah. Uh, things that are related to the day of Eid are two things. Takbir, uttering Allahu Akbar, we'll get to the details of that, and the prayer. Now, we said before, and I'll repeat, that in Islam the day starts from after the sun sets, and that's what starts the day. What marks the beginning of the day is the night. And then the following day is the completion of the 24 hours of that Islamic day. So, once Eid is announced, <clears throat> Either by sighting the new moon, if it's the 29th, or it happened to be the 30th day, then from sunset from that day, from that last day, the following is going to be Eid. Uh, uttering takbir is something that is recommended. As a matter of fact, Al Imam al Nawawi. Uh, stated that there are, there's a consensus amongst the scholars that it is recommended to utter takbir on Eid. Again, on Eid meaning from the time Eid is announced. So it is from the sunset of that night. So you start uttering takbir after the sun sets, if it's announced to be Eid the following day, and it continues until in normal situations when we go pray in the uh, prayer area or in the masajid in some places. In some until the imam stands up to lead the prayer. Because in Eid, we pray and then the khutbah is delivered. So, takbir is uttered, is recited from Sunset until the time of the prayer. And the time of the prayer is going to be discussed when we address the issue of the prayer itself. Uh, however, there is a difference between the Eid of Fitr and Eid of Al-Adha. In Eid of Al-Adha, there is takbir after every mandatory prayer, every, every prayer of the five daily prayers, which is called... At-takbir al-muqayyad. It's restricted to the time after salah. However, in Eid al-Fitr, there is no such thing. You don't 
recite takbir after maghrib and after isha particularly it's a mutlaq meaning it's open it's general you say takbir you utter takbir all the time now is there a certain form a certain wording for takbir well it is stated by the, the, the scholars that the best form is that is that has been conveyed is to say Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Walillahi alhamd. <coughs> and another uh, narration, it is twice instead of thrice saying Allahu Akbar. However, it is conveyed that different companions recited or uttered uh, takbir in different wordings, so. The, the, the matter is open, inshallah. Now, do we say it to ourselves or do we say it aloud? No, it is legislated and recommended to say it aloud. Men and women alike. However, in the presence of other men, in the situation where, when women uh, are in the musalla, outside, attending the Eid, with the congregation, then they say it to themselves. However, since we are in the home quarantine now <clears throat> and there is only the family then everybody is recommended to recite takbir uh, aloud however not in in one go each on his own or her own so now let's get to the issue of salatul eid the uh, prayer of eid should we pray it or should we not Meaning at home. Now this issue is an issue that uh, scholars had different opinions about. And I just want to clarify that there is a difference between the difference of opinion spoken about by the early scholars and what we're talking about. The early scholars spoke about the one who misses the Salah and the Salah is actually established. It is performed by some congregation and then they held different opinions whether a person who missed it for whatever reason is is it legislated for him or her to pray it alone or in a congregation at home or not some said no you're not allowed to because it's only legislated to be performed in uh, congregation and others said, no, you can. However, our situation here <clears throat> is different. In many of the countries, it is not going to be held altogether. And therefore, that difference of opinion amongst the scholars is not applicable here. Because they differed whilst it is established. And they differed regarding the people who did not attend it. But now no one is attending it. And again, there's a difference of opinion amongst the contemporary scholars. And I personally am convinced that if it is not going to be held in a country, then it's not legislated to be performed uh, at home. However, in the countries that will hold it, will perform it in a limited, restricted manner just to establish that uh, act of worship in the country. For example, in Qatar, they will do that. So we go back now to the old difference of opinion amongst the scholars. Yes or no, in this case, the majority of the scholars held the opinion that it is legislated to... Uh, perform the Salah, and how do you perform the Salah? We perform it exactly as it is performed in the prayer area. We pray two rakahs. However, there is no khutbah uh, after that, because the khutbah is done in the congregation. Now, the... the way the khutbah, the, the prayer is performed is that it has a, a certain number of extra takbir in every rak'ah. 
We do it exactly as we would do it if we are in the musalla with the congregation. Uh, should we pray it individually? The father, the mother, the, the children, each on his own or her own? Or should we do it as a congregation at home? Well, you can either do this or do that. Uh, the, the majority of the scholars held that it is recommended to pray it as a group, uh, as a congregation instead of individually. Uh, Anas radiallahu anhu, uh, whenever he missed the Salah, Salat al-Eid, he would uh, establish the Salah, he would perform the Salat, uh, the, the Salah, the Salat al-Eid, with his family at home, and he would uh, instruct uh, his male slave to, or servant, for that matter, uh, to lead the, the, the uh, prayer, and they would pray as a congregation. Uh, do we have to call adhan and an iqamah? Well, there is no adhan and iqamah for it anyways. So that's not applicable whether it is done at home or done uh, with the congregation. Uh, how do we perform Salat al How is the Salat performed to start with? Now, you say Allahu Akbar for the initial takbir. To enter into the salah. And then you say Allahu Akbar seven times. You don't say anything between each one of the takbir. You say Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. There is nothing said between the Allahu Akbar and the following one. So after the initial takbir, you say seven takbir and then you recite Fatiha. And in the first uh, rak'ah, you either recite Surah Al-A'la or Surah Qaf. And then you go finish and then you go up. And then after you stand up, you say Takbir five times. For the second rak'ah, it is only five times. And then after that, you recite Fatiha. And then after Fatiha, you recite either Al-Ghashiyah. If you recited Al-A'la, you would recite Al-Ghashiya according to the Sunnah, the practice of the Prophet ﷺ. If you recited Al-A'la, you recite Al-Ghashiya. If you recited Qaf, then you recite Al-Qamar in the second rak'ah. And this is uh, this opinion, that because there's an opinion that says it's only six in the first one. Well, this is taken from the narration of Aisha radiallahu anha, who stated that uh, takbir in saying Allahu Akbar in Salah in both Salat al-Eid in Fitr and Adha is seven after the first uh, in the first rak'ah and five in the second rak'ah excluding the relevant takbirs in the first rak'ah it's the takbir to take to, uh, to start the Salah and in the second rak'ah it's the takbir coming up from sujood and this is reported by Abu Dawood and classified as authentic by Al-Albani. Uh, recommended things are rec that are recommended to, to do during the day of Eid or on the day of Eid. Now, the only difference between those who are going to be performing Salatul Eid at home and those who would do it if it's uh, not prevented like we are now is that people will actually leave the house and go to the musallah. However, there are things that are going to be com common in common between uh, both situations. Number one is that as soon as you finish Salatul Fajr, you, it is recommended to eat something and it is recommended to eat dates as the Prophet Sallallahu in odd, uh, odd numbered uh, counts. One, three, five, whatever. Uh, and it is also recommended that one takes a bath, cleanses himself, adorns himself, dresses the best he has or he's able to dress with, uh, perfume himself and herself in our situation because the woman is not going to be leaving the house. However, if we were going to pray outside, then that's haram because she cannot adorn herself 
and perfume herself and walk outside. This is only done for her husband or in front of her uh, mahrams. It is also recommended that you congratulate others for the advent of Eid, as was the practice of the companions and the following generations after that. Is there a certain uh, wording for that? There is none that is uh, conveyed as sunnah or the practice, a certain practice to which the companions all adhere to or the majority of them adhere to. Uh, things like, may Allah accept our uh, deeds, uh, congratulations for the Eid, uh, something of, of the sort. Uh, and let me conclude with the last uh, thing here about things that people do that are not supposed to be done on Eid. But unfortunately, some people do that. Number one is that they finished Salatul uh, Isha the night before. Some of them sleep through Salatul Fajr the following day. Yes, people will be exhausted. The last 10 nights are very demanding and people will be devoted and they will be exerting extra, extra efforts to try to be amongst those who are freed and forgiven and pardoned on the day of Al-Qadr, on uh, the night of Al-Qadr. Yeah, that's fine. But that's not an excuse for us to sleep through Salatul Fajr. And some don't even bother to set an alarm. They just go to sleep and then whenever they wake up, they would pray it. And some they would not pray anything. It's as if Ramadan ended. The worship of Allah Azza wa ends with it. And that's very bad. Uh, under the pretext that it is Eid, a day to enjoy and entertain ourselves, to be happy with the family, some people may start playing music. Pure music with musical instruments. Now there's a difference between young girls and women beating the duf. I forgot the name of the duf. Uh, and playing this with music and all that. The second is not allowed, the first is. Some people commit prohibited matters like men thinking that part of adorning themselves on Eid, whether to themselves if they're single or to their, to their uh, wives, is to shave their beard. Shaving the beard in Ramadan, outside Ramadan, in Eid, it's all haram. So don't try to express your joy by... Challenging Allah's command. We need to humble ourselves instead of going against the command of Allah Azza wa Some women may adorn themselves, perfume themselves and walk outside. Now in, when there's a, a curfew then no one can go outside. But there are some countries where curfew is not actually rest, uh, strict or is not even applied altogether. So people can actually leave. So some women would adorn themselves, wear makeup, wear perfume, and then go outside. Why, sister? Why should you do that? Why should you incur the wrath of Allah Azza wa Jal? Why should you subject yourself to punishment? Some men, and women for that matter, we finished Ramadan. The first, they do, the first thing they do after Salatul Fajr, if they pray Salatul Fajr, light a cigarette. Oh man, we've been deprived from this through the month. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Things like that, as the scholar said, are very dangerous and they are signs that the previous deeds may not have been accepted by Allah Azza wa Because they say, a sign that a deed has been accepted by Allah Azza wa Jal is when the slave, he or she, are enabled to perform more acts of worship and draw closer to Allah Azza wa Jal. It, not, it might not be to the extent that uh, they did or what they did in Ramadan. That's true. But at least they would be enabled by Allah Azza wa Jal to do something good. And certainly... 
would not do something that is haram. These are signs that the deed is accepted. Otherwise, it's a dangerous sign that may reflect that the deeds were rejected by Allah. Some people, since it is Eid, believe, wrongly believe that they can perform uh, certain acts of worship special for Eid. Do Qiyam just because tomorrow is Eid, they do Qiyam. Or give charity because tomorrow is Eid. Well, attaching this to Eid is not legislated. Unless someone is used to performing Qiyam before Ramadan, and he just resumes what he used to do before Ramadan, then that's fine. Otherwise, it's not legislated, and it's not an act, uh, the practice of the Prophet ﷺ. Finally, some people become extremely extravagant in everything they do on the day of Eid. Whether it is food, whether it's dress, regardless. They spend in a... In a in a very extravagant way, exaggerated way, we need to remember that there are people on that day will not have anything to dress, will not have anything to eat, will not have the ability to sleep because they're being bombarded by aircrafts and missiles and tanks. And We need to thank Allah Azza wa Jal that at least we live, we live in peace. We need to be grateful to, to Allah Azza wa Jal that at least we don't fear that someone is going to walk into our homes and rape our wives and daughters and, and mothers. And we need to be grateful that we wake up and we go to the kitchen and we find something to eat. We need to be grateful that we can wake up and walk. There are people who are paralyzed. There are too many things. If you try to enumerate the bounties of Allah Azza wa you will utterly fail. You cannot. So express gratitude. Be happy. Enjoy yourself. But in a way that does not go against the commandments of Allah Azza wa We ask Allah Azza wa to prolong our lives until we live to the day of Eid and to enable us to continue on after Eid to be as Allah Azza wa Jal wants. Allahumma ameen wa akhiru da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik ashadu an la ilaha illa ant astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk.